It's those kinds of moments that make cavalry school so enlightening, even the history buffs. I thought I knew a lot about the Battle of Little Bighorn growing up. Steve Ramsey is a longtime Civil War reenactor who hauled his horses 2,500 miles to be here, all the way from Maine. When I got here two years ago for the first time, I left with an entire different viewpoint. When you look at it in the movies, it, you know, they got the flat land and it, and it looks completely different, which you envision from the movies, than what it really is when you come out here. And then you really start getting involved with uh, saddling horses and training and shooting authentic uh, era pistols and, and, and carvings, and then you find out that, you know, this is a hard life. While they may be outnumbered, women are, of course, as welcome at Cav School as men. It's been a lot of a lot of fun, very meaningful. You learn a lot of great history. Um, it's been unique. And Brenda Brown believes some women may have even fought in the cavalry, just like they did in the Civil War. I carry with me Civil War reenacting Francis Clayton. Okay. There's 317 documented women that fought in the Civil War, so I have to think that there were some women in the Frontier Cavalry at some point. Maybe not, but uh, it's, it's, it's a, a lot of fun. This is a very physical week, and there can be some bumps and bruises along the way. I basically monitor horses and people, make sure that everybody's safe. Diona's been coming here to ride with Cav School for eight years, a place that for her holds a spiritual attraction. The spirit, if you get into it and actually feel the spirit of what's here, both warrior and trooper, it's awesome. And she's not the only one. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of energy out here. Yeah, it's very mystical. There's spirits of the little bighorn, lots of spirits out here. Visiting this sacred ground where men fought and died can be especially meaningful to those who have served in today's military, like John Slotin, wounded in Iraq. I got shot through the lower portion of my jaw and it, the bullet exited out the uh, behind my left ear. But why would someone who has seen the true horror of war up close want to come here and reenact it? Always loved history and a lot of our staff and a lot of our uh, you know participants are veterans and have seen you know the horrors of battle and there's just something about the uh you know it's, it's more the camaraderie of a military unit that we all miss but we don't miss the gruesome horrors of you know what we've seen over there whether the soldier wanted to be there or not these were soldiers who came to america and they were out serving their country they some of them didn't even speak english yet and they were out defending this country doing the job that their country asked them to do and they died in that effort and they died out here and so to me it may sound corny, but it, it has a sense of reverence to it for me. It's like a, going to Arlington Cemetery out here, 210 guys died defending this country for the freedoms that we have today. I'll never, at my age, climb Mount Everest or be one of the lucky astronauts to go to the moon, but I can say that I've ridden pretty much the, the whole trail that Custer rode. Along with the history, the horses, and the comradeship, is the sheer beauty of this place. The Little Bighorn River, Montana in summertime. A great place to be. Super, how could I not be doing super out here? I come from the east, you don't have Vista like this. We did have a bit of rain, in fact, more than a bit. But hey, the cavalry rides in all kinds of weather and the showers just made it easier to appreciate the sunshine. And those beautiful mornings in camp, or we'd savor the scenery and a cup of coffee before the sound of the trumpet called us to the morning flag raising and inspection from General Custer. Good morning, Lieutenant. Cool stuff. For some of the troopers, portraying the 7th is a never-ending hobby. Honoring the man. Like Ron Glasgow, who not only portrays Custer's friend, Lieutenant William Cook, but with his big dungaree-style beard, looks like him too. There's 14 points in his life and my life that match up, so I tend to kind of think that other than the whiskers, I might have some of his spirit and, and uh, some of his enthusiasms and passion, share some of the passions that he had too for the uh, Seventh Cavalry. And Gary Stewart looks a lot like Custer. I do it because I love history. I have a real passion for history. 
And the, the Custer's Last Stand battle is such a complex, historically uh, significant battle. There's just so many facets to it that you, you try to trying to figure it out, and you get more interested and hooked into it every every time you read something or or you study it. It's history that appeals to people from all walks of life. I'm here for the fourth fourth time, actually. Fourth time. Swiss native Stefan Neher and his son Fabio returned to Cavalry School for another year from their current home in Singapore. Oh, it's a lot of things. It's, uh, you know, it's a history. You feel, you really feel the history when you're here. It's also the people, the bond you make with the people when you're here and riding the battlefield, the horses. It's, it's so many things. I like to riding and do something with my father. And on top of everything else, cavalry school is simply one great horseback adventure, starting with crossing the Little Bighorn. 